exercise 12. In this exercise, we take a look at the functionality built into SOLIDWORKS for taking DXF and EWG files, perhaps from AutoCAD or or an older 2D legacy CAD system, and converting them to 3D. We'll begin by going to File Open and find your flash drive. And you should be able to find your CAD 121 Advanced SOLIDWORKS folder, Sample Files, and the Exercise 12 folder. What you need to do down here is change it to DX or DWG, and you'll find Exercise 12. Go ahead and hit Open. There's a couple options in here. First of all, you could create a new SOLIDWORKS drawing, convert it to SOLIDWORKS entities. That's actually what we're going to do. You could also embed it into a native DXF or DWG format, meaning that you could take like title blocks and things for different customers and put them in automatically with their logos and such. We're not going to do that in this exercise, but just know it's there. Also, you could import it into a new part as 2D sketches or 3D curves. What we're going to do actually in this case is just the default convert to a SOLIDWORKS entities. So hit next, and then you'll see it will bring up an image of what we have. It's scanned through and this is our, what we have. We have the ability to go through here and turn off, uh, for example, annotations, dimensions, geometry we want to leave on, cross-hatching, template, and any defining points that there might be. And then it leaves us with what we just see there. But I'm going to leave a couple of these on just to show you some of the tools that you could do in just a moment with this. I'm going to hit next. Also, SOLIDWORKS does a pretty good job of trying to scale it to where it will fit on a proper sheet. In this case, it picked out a B landscape size, which is okay. Uh, if you wanted to, you could convert it from inches to metric. Uh, be careful because it might actually be scaled differently at that point, so you might want to measure and verify the, uh, the size is correct. But again, I'm going to go with the drawing sheet scale 1 to 1 and hit finish. Now what it brought in here again was very similar to what we just saw. But if you wanted to, you could always go and right click up here and find line format. The line format tool is very useful for layers and changing colors and such. If I go to the layer properties, I see that same exact set of options I saw earlier. So I could turn off the cross-hatching just by clicking on the light bulb to turn it off. And also I could turn off the template the same way. And then I'm left with nothing but the geometry, which is what I really want anyway. At this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select some geometry. We have to determine what is going to give us the most bang for the buck. And then we're going to steal it and bring it over to a part file and either extrude it or revolve it. Now in this case, it just so happens that this was a section view right here. This has a center line, and that should actually work very well for a revolve feature. We'll take this bottom one because it's solid, versus this one has the whole gap in it. And we don't want to revolve that, or else it would just be two rings that are concentric to each other. So we'll just click and drag a fence to surround this geometry. And now you could go to Edit, Copy. Let's start a new file, new part file. Hit open. Select the plane you'd want to drop it in. In this case, uh, that would be the front of the wheel there. We go, um, or actually, I should say it's a cross section. So really, that's on the right plane because it's sectioned from the right side. So we could click on the, the right plane and go to Edit and Paste. Now if you hit F for fit, you'll see that it appears. What we're going to do is we're going to edit that sketch to center it. So if you right click on it and edit the sketch, you'll see that it comes out this way. And we actually see the origin over here. Why don't we try and move it over to that point? If you click and drag a fence around this, you'll notice there actually is a point on the center line in the middle. If it wasn't there, we could put one in and then do what we're about to do. So because then we get it centered. The trick here is to hold control and drag. Drag it to that origin 
and then bef as you're releasing it, release control first as you get it on that point, and then you can release the mouse button, and it should copy it there. Hit rebuild. And now we can click on that sketch and go to revolve. Actually, before we do that revolve, let's edit the sketch. I want to show you a couple more little tricks. Hit F. If it doesn't zoom out like this, just hit rebuild again and edit the sketch. Okay, at this point I want to show you how you could actually add the relations and constraints back. You could go to Tools, Dimension, Fully Defined Sketch. And at this point you could select All Entities, hit Calculate, and it will add dimensions and relations in order to fully define it. Hit the green check mark, and now it's fully defined. At this point, we could go to Features and Revolve Boss Base. It'll wrap around our center line and create the wheel hub. Let's go back to our drawing by holding Control and hitting Tab once. Now, at this point, we could take one of these holes just by right clicking on it and select chain. Now go to edit, copy, or control C, either one works. Then hold control and hit tab again to toggle back. Actually, you might have to click on the screen and hit control, hold control and hit tab to toggle back to the part. This is going to go on our front plane, so click on the front plane and hit edit, paste. If you hit F on your keyboard, you can zoom out and see that it's up there. Now we could just double click on that sketch to edit it. Click and drag a fence around it and do the same thing that we did last time when we hold control, grab that point right there, which is the center point of this top arc, and drag. Now when you get it to the center point, release control first and then release the mouse button. If you have a copy that you made, just click and drag a fence around it to delete it. Again, from here we could go to Tools, Dimension, Fully Defined Sketch, hit Calculate, and Done. Now I could go to Features, Extrude Cut, and notice it's going to cut through one side, so we want Through All on both sides, so Direction 2 as well, Through All. Hit the green check mark. At this point we'll put the fillets on, and if we're not sure what the fillets are, we could always go back to the drawing, the control and tab, or going to window and finding the drawing. And the radius shows up right over here, and we could take and measure one of these. So if we go to our evaluate, we have the tape measure. You should be able to select the arc here, and it'll tell us the the size. At this point it actually wasn't able to identify it as an arc, so let's clear that. Pick the point instead of the actual arc itself. Try that again. Okay, the radius is 0.2. So let's go back, go to fill it, 0.2, and select this edge and this edge here. Click on Full Preview to verify. Hit the green check. Now we could just pattern that. Let's select both features. Go to underneath the linear pattern, there's a little arrow. Click on Circular Pattern. And we want it to wrap around this face here. Equal spacing, 360 degrees, and there's going to be five instances. Hit the green check mark to apply it. There is our wheel. That finishes exercise 12. Now you could try the lab that's in there, and let me show you a technique for the lab. We'll actually go to File, Open, and find on your flash drive under the CAD 121, Advanced Sample Files. Exercise 12. This time, instead of a DWG, try the DXF that's in there. It's lab 12. Hit open. 
now we're going to actually import it into a, a new part. It's a little bit different. We'll take a different approach strategy. We'll try and turn off any layers if you can. They're, unfortunately, they're all in one layer. And this option actually gives us some enhancements. If there's any gaps, it will actually allow us to close the gap distances. That's generally from sloppy sketching. Over the years, a lot of people in AutoCAD didn't matter if you had gaps and openings because the intention was there's never going to be a 3D model made from it. But now when you could use this geometry rather than recreating it, might as well close the distance gaps. And that's what this does. So just hit finish. Yes. And it comes over. My suggestion here is it's created the sketch. Click on exit sketch. We'll use that as our template. Now take and take some measurements by going to the evaluate and measure the distances between these two lines. So we know that's going to be 0.125 high. Clear this section. Remember, you could hit the chevron here to get the measurements. And then from here to here, that's 0.75. Right click, clear the selection. The radiuses are typical 0.25. Okay, so let's select the front plane, start a sketch. And we're going to steal this geometry. Just hold control, select these circles in the outer diameter, and then the inner diameter. Hit convert entities, and I'll go to features, extrude. 1.25 and apply. Now select the front face, start a sketch, double click normal 2, go to convert entities, select the ID as well as the second concentric circle. Convert entities, both. And now we could go to features, extrude that. Select that profile, it's going to be 0.75 high. Click the green check mark. Now you could go to the fillet tool, and those were 0.25. So you can select this edge and this edge. Hit apply. And there's our model. And anytime we could click on this and hide it, there it is. So that's another approach. They both have some strengths and weaknesses, so it's up to you to decide which one you want. I'll just say if you bring it to the 3D model, uh, if it's a very large file, it slows down things considerably. So it's almost easier to bring it into a drawing first and just copy and paste what you need. And that concludes exercise 12.